nous allons commencer la, la séance. Donc, nous sommes réunis euh, aujourd'hui pour écouter la course de thèse de Gonzalo Villegas au LARP. Euh, je vais commencer par présenter le jury et ensuite euh, on à l'exposé aux techniques. Donc euh, les, les rapporteurs de cette thèse euh, donc, euh, sont Berger, voilà, voilà, le directeur de recherche. Thank you very much, Mr. President of the jury. Good afternoon, and thank you everyone as well for attending the defense of this PhD research work on the topic of numerical reconstruction of the organ by the Valerie Dynasty in the Chapelle de la Sorbonne. Uh, this work has been funded by the Institut des Sciences de Calcul et de Données and supervised by Brian Katz and Benoit Faber. Let us start by uh, discussing the elementary element, uh, elementary aspect of an organ operation. For the sake of simplicity, let us inspect the recently arrived organ into the laboratory. This little organ provides us with a stem of air that delivers to our regulation and a system that together try to approximately deliver always the same pressure to the wind chest of the organ, to the wind front, lastly to the wind chest, the most rigid side you see, which we generally can open, see the interior, we can see the interior full of uh, the pallet box, interior full of the, the valves that lead the flow into the grooves for each note that we are playing from the keyboard. That is what a valve looks when it's open by means of, for example, mechanical traction on the keyboard, which in this case will be in the rear, if the relevant node register ranks are activated or deactivated by means of pulling from top or pulling mechanism, then finally one obtains the subpipe results, which we can see, for example, in this case such as this. examples of an organ working and an organ not working. Let us move on to the organ that we are discussing currently work today. The presentation today is divided in three main parts. The first one deals with the sound sources, how they are driven, what is the wind system supply, and uh, one of the contributions of uh, original contributions of our current work is on modeling an initialization function whose application is the uh, uh, simulation of organ type. The second part uh, deals with the uh, mimicking or simulation or modeling of the radiation of the organ as an instrument. And lastly, we uh, work on putting in sample all the elements presented and we propose uh, hypothetical or um, speculative funding results and strategies for achieving them. If we now take a look at the organ that we are discussing, uh, you can see that it's quite big. It's very noisy, it's got wind or air leaks everywhere. You can move it to the laboratory. And in this case, it's not in good state of uh, conservation. It's brought with scaffolding, it's got a safety net, so uh, that poses already difficulties. And on the modeling side of things, we will have to see uh, the sources contain a uh, they are characterized by the delay and the non-linear nature. 
and one particular area that we will discuss later on the radiation avoidance is that if we are registering a frequency, let's say la, it does not necessarily correspond to a location inside the organ. We've got a thousand bytes inside, they've got each one harmonic series, they've got uh, doublings in octaves up and down, and they've got repetition. It's a quite complex one in terms of uh, source localization. The organ in uh, question is constructed by the Dallaray dynasty, that's uh, built actually by the last one of them, that happens simultaneously or with overlap with the uh, Aristide Vallecol, uh, Vallecol dynasty, the Sure, the Clico. The one that you can see here is in this repair, as we mentioned before, but it has also suffered from disappearing pipes, um, meteorological incidences, revolution incidences, etc. It is going to be also convenient for us that the geometry of the enclosure that houses a thousand bytes, a thousand three hundred in this case, is easily uh, transferred to approximation such as a shoebox geometry, a unique interior volume, and a flat facade array of uh, cylinders or pipes at the front. Because that organ is not accessible, we then seek to access uh, features in other organs that were available. This is why we have access to uh, Notre Dame de Paris, the Tribune organ, in order to carry measurements that were made possible of the facade. In Perugia, in Italy, we have measured in a church organ, in a laboratory organ by the same organ manufacturer, in Santa Elisabeth de Hongri, as read, and an idealization in the uh, facilities of Sorbonne and University. What do we have from Dallary to start with? Well, there's some documentation that has been conferences, there are pamphlets, there are inventories, photographies from all that uh, compendium of data. We have to infer what is used to further either geometry of pipes, geometry of winches, or wind supply system. Uh, this is a sample of such uh, of that uh, documentation. On the left hand side, we have, for instance, that uh, we know the diameters of the pipes for some of the pipes, not for all of them, not for all of them, and not for all of them. We will try to model later on uh, the pipes concerning the, the flute and the present of the great organ of the Dalek. Uh, we have also managed to find geometry details on the winches and halibosters that are driving the Dalek organ. Uh, what do we have to do then with all the data that we're missing? All the diameters, all the pipes, pipe lengths that we don't know, all the apertures that we don't know, all the food in that we don't know, we will have to deduce and work out scaling rules and uh, interpolations of fittings for data available. One such scaling concerns the length of the pipe, which is the acoustic length of the resonator, and generally says what is the with its fixed length by the manufacturer, what is the singing frequency of the note. Some minor modifications may alter the length, such as tuning by tuning rings or coning, etc. And the pipes are categorized in uh, organ jargon by the by their length in octaves or by uh, increasing dupli uh, duplicating length frequency. And that is uh, that fixed in four foot, two foot, one foot, and so on, being the longest of each octave, the reference for the length of the smaller ones. If we are discussing the geometry to scale, most salient from the geometry uh, from a pipe, we have the length of the pipe, the diameter of the resonator, the dimensions of the mouth, and these are the diameter. Constructing uh, organ pipes is basically eminently uh, empirically based and traditionally based. So it moves from one generation of organ meters to next generation. It is massively dependent on countries, styles, manufacturers, uh, centuries. Therefore, they provide generally a rule of thumb of a fourth of 
the mouth is the fault of the flu in order to provide with a more with a finer rule of uh, rule of Sorry. we have used the uh, good penguin data to have a better approximation to know how to find this dimension, this dimension, and this dimension here. Furthermore, if we have a criteria for dimensioning the diameter of the pipe with respect to its length, uh, this can be done by historical rules, Pythagorean rules, power rules, or it can be done as well as per the image on screen where we are considering maximization of the quality factors, the resonator of the, the resonator of the organ pipe is acting as a filter for all the frequencies possible. The mode or the resonances, therefore a pipe with a very fundamental sound will have most of the energy in the first resonance, in the first mode that is represented by the idea of the quality factor maximized to the first mode here, then second, third and fourth. The so whole overlay the data of diameters that we have seen previously of the in the little inventory, they are interestingly matching correctly or in good agreement with the fundamental sound as they are types of the preston or principal. We have also overlaid data for the five sample pipes that we're gonna look at later for measurements. Lastly, if we are talking about scalings. We have to consider if we want to uh, inspect the driving pressure, what happens between the rigid, the largest rigid cavity that was mentioned, the pallet box, up until the foot of the pipe. That is to say, how many cross section constrictions will happen. One of the most salient ones is the, the roof that amounts to something like this. And uh, as it was said before, it massively depends on manufacturers, countries, and areas on how to proceed with dimensioning those those holes for the flow. On the left-hand side, you see a representative amount of models of uh, group widths that decrease homothetically as one progresses to high frequencies. The first organ that we have seen today in the example is the one that is not following that very rule. And that is, however, Satisfactory any, uh, anyway by the organ building community. Now let us move to the pipe modeling. If we anticipate you know, the measurements that we will discuss later, we will gain familiarity on uh, what the signals, the pressure signals, are going to look like. And the five sample types that you saw previously are represented on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, from top to bottom, we are representing where these pressure signals that we have measured at different stages of the supply system and the organ that starts with the pallet box pressure, then the narrow groove, then the foot of the pipe, foot of the pipe, and the last two with mean zero mean zero pressure, that is to say atmospheric surrounding pressure. Uh, they correspond to the interior of the pipe and the lowest and the smallest circulation amplitude correspond to radiated pressure from the mouth. Uh, we are keen on modeling characteristics of these two in order to inspect how to encapsulate characteristics of the driving pressure. Uh, organ types in modeling the, during the last uh, five, seven decades, half leverage from uh, one, two, and three dimension, <coughs> dimensional uh, representations, uh, where lumping elements, where lumping elements was uh, more relevant for representations of uh, length direction impedance, like acoustic sources, cavities at the rim of the mouth, pairs of vortex. Uh, turbulence, uh, losses of the labium, etc. Now we take a look sideways to the organ that we have seen initially. And we see from top to bottom that we have got rigid cavity with the pallet box with the sort of 
unstable pressure. The valve opens the pallets, the roof, and then we are leading the flow into the foot of the pipe, mouth of the pipe, and resonator if we are modeling in terms of the preventing system, that would be what is driving pressure here. The dynamics over there, the delay caused because of the air jet going from the flute to the larium. It is traveling the distance here. The jet drive sources is the mechanism that uh, this jet operates in order to produce the uh, produce an aerosystem sound. Dipole at each side of the labium. And lastly, we are radiating on both openings of the resonator, which is the most dominating phase in an organ. Uh, those contributions may be modeled by these well established equations by now. Uh, this is modeling the origin of the jet velocity, the time it takes to travel the mouth the displacement of the jet in the mouth, the acoustic sources and losses of the labium, an equation, a uh, second order differential equation that represents the resonator, then a uh, radiation condition that tells us what is the pressure retrieved back from the resonator in the mouth. This is a coupling term of resonator downstream and foot upstream. Our purpose is to provide something upstream from the mouth pressure so that we can start the simulation with a uh, more realistic function than a ramp. Two strategies to tackle that could be we propose uh, three Bernoulli flow approximations that are moving so, from body box to the groove and from groove to the foot and eventually mouth. We are employing three Bernoulli equations, the conservation of mass after some algebraic modifications, consider that all these two coefficients are just related to the geometry and the rest of variables are velocities of flow and pressures in the cavity. That gives us uh, five coefficient system to solve, high sensitive to parameters of very different orders of magnitude. Alternatively, we may encapsulate the characteristics that were mentioned before about the initial tangents and initialize our simulations with a nest function or a logistic function or a smooth step function, such as the logistic one, where I just need to start by giving two parameters, the beta and the nu, represented up there. The beta will be linked to the slope we have of the maximum growth rate. Right? the new will provide us the non-linearity of this sharp start of build up. In order to check our hypothesis and our models, we have, uh, I have put all the measurement gear in a couple of uh, cases and uh, the five organ pipes where we had to classify that means drill into them and uh, we use them in Perugia, in the two organs that uh, we saw earlier plus the laboratory condition first uh, first thing to notice here is the great difference in the volumes that are going to be driving the pipe some code of 4 liters something like 4 to 50 liters in this pallet box something like 150 liters here. We may expect to raise some changes in the uh, intrangents of any type. Space inspection of the data may be done by considering what happens if we inspect a non-dimensional time and a non-dimensional jet velocity or reduced jet velocity which is an indicator of the state of oscillation of the of the mouth of the pipe. On the left hand side you have laboratory measurements. On the right hand side, you have uh, measurements in actual organs. Uh, repeated measures are done uh, at the same color in the church organ. The other one in gray is in the workshop organ. Notice for starters, the difference in build, uh, build up onset time. But more informative yet is to consider the reduced velocity in red 
compared against the poly coefficients of the first three modes, particularly the ratio of the second to the first and the third to the first. On the top row, you have three measurements of five going to three in the laboratory conditions. Note for starters, the early onset of the build-up for the reduced velocity, and at the same time, how similar they are in amplitude, the second and third modes to the fundamental. As measured in actual organs, it is generally seen that there is a delay onto the onset of the build-up then gaining a rapid growth and in terms of the Fourier coefficients there is none of them starting anywhere near the uh, similar amplitude the unit. We have integrated in time the physical model of the flow driving our model or our pipes and we have fitted our our logistic model to measure data which you can see on the left hand side measure data is represented in black and we overlay the other two models marking as well where is the, the point of maximum growth on dashed line on the right hand side you see that systematically solving the solving the physical model which in the first instance instance is run in order to adjust the measured parameters such as cross section volumes and secondly we find that the points of maximum growth are not well uh, predicted or are less well predicted than by the resistance. Lastly we have fitted for now the value of the beta parameter which was giving us the slope of the growth rate. We have measured those five foot bytes in uh, three different conditions represented on the system of, on screen, which gives us a relationship of the volume of the pipe to the volume of the largest cavity upstream, as well as a non-dimensional pressure and notion on the vertical axis that leads to representation on the top left, different from the one you would see in the manuscript, for which uh, we have uh, tackled our simulations assuming uh, these fitting of values as a ballpark for initialization. The conditions, the few conditions that are uh, represented are driving those five bytes and the three cavities that we have discussed so far. This is in Perugia in the workshop, this is in Perugia in an actual in an actual organ. And finally, for the sake of our simulations, we have taken the full model of our pipe and the model of uh, the logistics that proposed, and we have used it for uh, inspecting if we could trust a model for uh, simulating the whole organ or at least two rank of five. This is what is represented in the center of the uh, on screen. Uh, there is a sign of frequency, sampling frequency for which we have run the simulation under a certain set of initial conditions. And we have used uh, in situ measurements of the, the response of the board in order to have something to contrast with the results obtained of the radiated So far we have introduced a model that encapsulates the effects of the wind supply system and the blowing system, the reservoirs and the receiving of such wind into the delivery or the wind chest. And what is the effect into the swimming frequency and into the uh, foot pressure rise time in the organ pipe. We have compared it with uh, some measurements and uh, we have looked at one implementation of a uh, discretization of our physical uh, of the physical model well established of the organ pipe. We're going to move now on to 
second section of our presentation. We are now dealing with modeling the radiation of very big and noisy instruments. We have so far seen how we model the elementary sources. The elementary sources are inside the, an enclosure, a wooden enclosure, but there is not one. There are a thousand of them, and the enclosure may have a response, as has a response this here, for example. The enclosure is actually open on the front, and the enclosure is actually inside a church. The problem is increasing in complexity. We have one pipe, pristine and measured under very controlled conditions. We have a lot of those pipes, with a lot of them missing. And we have an enclosure that we are going to propose approximations for, and we want to know can we predict what is the artificial radiating from there on the front? To start for that, we have to say what uh, what can we model and which frequency regimes. We may start by separating three main areas or three main frequency ranges, which are the low frequencies where we are going to be dealing with monopoles, plus the transparency of walls, where walls represented with semi perforated with uh, some transmission losses. In the mid frequencies, we will uh, we will have um, the mid frequencies. We will have uh, in the mid frequencies we have to model sources, secondary sources that are placed in the openings where the state of the phase of the incident field starts becoming important, and we observe uh, individual uh, individual directivity. As we move on to the high frequencies, uh, such choices will become uh, an statistical problem. We start by proposing or by inspecting uh, the variation of single sleep, and we should propose the multi uh, multiplicity of them eventually. Uh, um, the problem that we are going to tackle here is we model a source of the interior. We are modeling the response of the interior as a closed problem. We open that cavity. We insert a, ma a matrix of cylinders, or also called a forest, which represents the pipes that are in the interior of the organ. We open a page at the front, and then we finish by what you see outside. One of the approximations we're going to make for that is consider that the organ is basically infinite. And so are the apertures for a certain uh, frequency distance, which are ranging from things like this to things like this, depending on the size of the organ. We are going to consider that the slits don't have a mass, that the slits are rigidly bounded on the sides, and that the slits, or so called resi resilient slits, uh, have a uniform pressure distribution along the surface. What we're going to consider for the modeling of the interior response of the cavity is that we have an incident field. The monopole, in this case, we're going to take a slice of the organ, a two dimensional monopole, um, exciting at the position of zero. We are going to have an effect of the walls, discothermal, if the organ has not. All the walls made of wood, but the sharing some of the walls of the church. It's too close enclosure to have very rigid walls, marble, etc. Or affecting the walls, such vibration of the walls, which are represented by specific emittances. The effect of the of the apertures is represented on screen as we are projecting the uh, eigenshifts of the response with the apertures. And lastly, the effect of inserting 170 cylinders, or 50% of them, or 90% of them. We may start the the solving the problem by causing a propagation equation and drive on conditions. 
from which we derive our eigenfunctions and the amplitudes that fulfill them. And uh, using the modal decomposition framework, we can use uh, Green's functions such as our uh, as our general solution with relevant value conditions, such as in this case on screen, and at least in even, and at least in even. If we are more specific in our solution and implement the effects we just mentioned before, we have got here the specific emissions of the walls, the bounding walls. We have got the effect of having apertures, which was projected in that representation onto the item text to see the modification. And we have got the scattering effect represented by models of the wave number perturbation, where we have used, where we have used uh, function modification and uh, transfer matrix, which relates the incident and scattered field into a complex field of arbitrary field. If we model now set of one slit or n slits, and we place ourselves in the mid frequencies regime, we can find from acoustic uh, textbooks the presentations of one monopole, one pulsating source, two pulsating sources, and an array of equally distant pulsating sources that maybe represent at the top left equation, and a few results are represented on the right hand side. And extra refinement can be found by adding phases at the field right behind the apertures or an array of individual phases for each of them. A few of those phases represented on the right hand side. Lastly, uh, the set of approximations that we have done to model our system here uh, has to has to find its place with, uh, among uh, among different uh, models of radiation. As of 2007, one can find uh, 13 models of radiation in some articles. And they may vary in the shape of the aperture radiation, the mass of the aperture, the type of field, and the incidence of the field. We have chosen one aperture that is infinitely, very, infinitely long vertical, buffered on the side, and that satisfies the idea of the resilient trick. That is represented on the right hand side according to the coordinates presented before, with a pressure continuity condition at the interface between interior and exterior, and a velocity condition. But the following steps proposed. In 2011, Melo Karkainen one has to solve a system, a matrix system, which leads us to the possibility of computing the pressure at one given position for one aperture, which was compared already in measurements carried out in, in the laboratory for the individual aperture, or it can be performed for an array of n aperture, as it's done on the left hand side. The representations are just a linear representation that spans all the width of the cavity system, or in polar, same consideration but at different frequencies. And the top image has been overlaid with a few of the um, acquisition pressure points in measurement that we're going to see later, just to say that they, uh, the grid spacing that we use for measurements will suffer from spatial aliasing at some frequency. See that we are observing 8 kilohertz here and one may misinterpret results. In order to satisfy the set of approximations that we have proposed, we would like to have a kind of device that excites our organs in such a way that simplifies things. One such thing is our three-dimensional problem. We would like to have it two-dimensional. Such a source is, for example, the cylindrical source. There are idealizations. 
astrophysics from acoustics, we may consider the cylindrical source, which is not ideal. It's a truncation in space, but it might be bounded or baffled from the top and bottom by the ceiling and bottom of the organ. We have developed, designed, and built two sources for two cases that we have made, one of them in the laboratory. And the other one in uh, the trillion organ interior of Notre Dame. Uh, those cylindrical sources allows us also to uh, obtain a higher pressure amplitude at a given distance from source if we are interested in particular locations in front of uh, the excita uh, excitation source. Initial tests that we have carried with uh, one of such sources is closing the idealized cavity and, and measuring the internal pressure at several points. This is easily seen as this microphone sliding horizontally parallel to the front face and seeing some axial modes disappearing. In the second representation, we have differently changed the aperture condition. We have now no apertures or one aperture, then we see a general trend of positive shift on the frequency, uh, frequency eigenfrequency. We have also placed an unnecessary amount of microphones on a slit to end up validating the idea of the resilient strip. Resilient strip is a model that we are, however, using, employing for the high frequency model of radiation. So this serves as a static effect. We have seen here that uh, all the magnitude and phase events are happening just because of the vertical alignment. But this interface starts aligning with uh, nodes and antinodes of the vertical mode behind the slit. Another experiment that we have carried here was to remove all the conditions, no walls. No matter what, no rear walls, no forest of cylinders at the back, and only preserve the front, the facade, the array of cylinders. And we want to see what happens when we have a facade. Well, the data you're seeing, the measured pressure at the vicinity of the interface and farther away from the vicinity, is a representation of a, a horizontal concatenation of factor functions as per the whole width of the setup and the span of frequency characteristics in the low frequency not represented on screen one finds the model behavior in uh, mid to high frequencies at uh, both distances one is an interesting event that we will uh, discuss later in terms of uh, characteristic frequency of the system between the frequencies of 3 kilohertz and 4 kilohertz, farther on one can identify individualized characteristic um, patterns and interference, phase interference phenomena. These phenomena, however, in further distances, do disappear after about 4 kilohertz for the current condition in dimensions, changing drastically between to a frontal or lateral propagation direction. We show a little sample selection of the activity patterns in order to recognize some features. These pertain so far to the uh, idealized orium carried out in the unequal chamber. In low emit frequencies, uh, model behavior patterns have issues may be analytically estimated. They are both present in the vicinity and far from the interface, as represented by the physics on the top left. And its presence is verified by the phase inversions on the right hand side of the top, and the number of them visible up to the hundred percent condition of the point, which is highly unsuitable for an organ, for a two dimensional uh, realization of an organ. Such a density of pipe is beyond uh, norm. At the bottom, we start seeing indices of the characteristic frequency 
just introduced before, between 3 and 3.4 kHz, which seems to show a particularly strong frontal load, even when modifying some of the conditions, the density, the distance, and the lateral wall spreading. Now, if you consider changes due to density of the forest, we see in some in a few low frequencies the inversion of the activity from patterns, if you aperture forest, uh, the characteristic frequency makes it for the third time around 3, 3.4 kilohertz, seems to gain prominence as the density increases and in the high frequencies, 2.7 kilohertz, the frontal lobe scattering effects are apparent as soon as the facade array system is introduced, the so called 9% corresponds to the facade. And it remains there, even at densities of 100% density of forest. We have proceeded with the same protocol of measurement as in the idealized organ, but now in the Notre Dame case. The Notre Dame opportunity was to measure an organ in which uh, whose conditions were complete emptiness in the interior. There are no pipes, there are no winches, therefore we had the opportunity of measuring the effect of a facade. On the other hand, this is contributing a new rate of uh, degree of complexity, which is protruding powers that we did not have. In the case of the gallery organ, this produces 90 centimeters average from the flat surface. And on the right hand side, you can see the implementation of the acquisition system of uh, equally distributed microphones parallelly, parallelly moving, parallelly, sorry moving in parallel to the facade. Uh, we have extracted a few features from those measurements in the uh, Notre However, the work is uh, in an early stage of process validation. The models require scaling and calibration as per the procedures shown before for the, for the idealized one, knowing, uh, knowing the impedances yeah, the specific ingredients uh, of bounding surfaces, uh, knowing exactly the apertures, center to center diameters. In this case, in the Notre Dame, we have drastic changes in the center to center distance of the scatterers at the front. We have pipes at the facade that are yay big, and other ones like that. And the so called protruding towers. Uh, direct induction of the longest dimension scaling 1 to 6 would probably lead us to the erroneous conclusions. One promising or prospective approach to that would be implementing the geometry in a numerical scheme at the cost of uh, computation time and resources. Uh, this application has uh, firstly been introduced with application to not the dam scattering of piers and pillars. We have considered the change of application by changing the geometry and uh, changing the exploitation conditions and receiver. In this case, you can see a uh, meshing of the facade of Notre Dame organ uh, with a marker where the location of our source was and the loop, the acquisition points in front of the facade as per the measurement. Is resorting to such methods, this is the possibility of changing the receivers to the shape that we want. Something that is not so possible in conditions as Notre Dame or any other where we, we may not have a way of a close contour for the exact same condition. This allows us also for visualization of velocity potential fields and uh, from such approaches, we can uh, also extract uh, pressure, uh, pressure data, as we did before for the case of the transfer function of the facade in measurements in animal conditions. Here, what we're saying is uh, position changes 
angular changing of how the propagation of the wave front goes as a function of frequency where we infect these two relate well that is a sorry this dimension this is a 20 centimeters from the interface as measured data this is a 1.6 meters from the interface measured data between the center are numerically obtained at 1.5 meters for better resembling this case and 4.5 meters where we want to consider that our uh, part is conditioned with the The same data may be used to you inspect the notion of a transient or pseudo-transient state of the facade where we are including or inspecting different uh, different points of the signal. We are starting our window in time at one point and we are advancing or sliding our window and inspecting what the field is doing in terms of spectra at two different distances and at different time instances. On the left hand side, in the 1.5 meter phase, in the right hand side, farther away. This allows us to extract data from the locations where we have represented the activity patterns earlier. In this section we have presented, identified and selected a few radiation models that constitute a sufficient theoretical corpus for modeling or mimicking the features that we're interested in in the physical variation of organ parts. And we have presented protocols, measurements, and results from acoustic variation in several organs. We move on to the last section. This is what we're going to try to make the digital organ sing. The back coral. First thing we do is extract voices and extract MIDI orders, MIDI messages that have not simulated the last voice. From all the documentation data that we saw at the very beginning, we have uh, worked out routines to infer the geometry that we don't know, to infer the response of pipes that we don't know. That leads to such a thing as the invisible instrument file on the right hand side, which allows ultimately to tweak each of the instruments individually, each of the pipes individually. This is what an organ maker would do with an actual organ. When it comes to tuning, voicing, harmonizing, they are going to be modifying the position of this ring, the labium, the labium, the opening, the opening. We have arrived to the same problem. The model here is highly difficult to take, and there's a big amount of parameters to consider if you use the tweet. The most prominent of those are what is the good target pressure, the few parameters that we have proposed for the initialization, and many others that would be better suited for an automatization routine that would attempt to target and measure actual pressure signals. So far, we have worked out, I have worked out uh, essentially if the result of the simulation was satisfactory or not. For two ranks, that is 108 pipes. It is envisaged that we will way of doing that with more intelligence. And lastly, we want to hear the organ in the chapel. Well, here is the chapel, Sorbonne. I hope you can see the day of the year that it's open. Otherwise, it's something like this. Here we develop a geometrical model which serves for the geometrical acoustic purpose. And that geometrical model is calibrated to what the space, what the space is doing. For that, we have data that tells us we excite the room in such a way with a speaker or with a balloon. And the response is in this way using methods such as reverberation or clarity. You may see disagreements in the low frequencies between the two strategies of, um, of excitation. Bear in mind also that the simulation is happening up in the height. We are simulating an organ at 12 meters above the floor, and we are 
taking measurements of excitation of the room at ground level. Uh, you can see on the right hand side that one of those two protocols. And the conditions that we have considered are the current state of this chapel, which is a big monster of limestone, empty, with no decoration almost, where previous states contained maze, massive maze, an audience worth of chairs, sculptures that change positions, pulpits, closing of lateral galleries that change the total volume. It is probable that it sounds differently than before. The end-to-end -end modeling experience that we propose here is we started by saying we can contribute a way of initializing more realistically our our simulation. We simulate our bite and we obtain the pressure at the mouth. We said, how do we model the response of the interior of the buffet? It's involved with the pressure of the source. We have discussed what is the effect of the facade. We compute, we compute a, a full width worth of transfer functions. We see we have selected on axis and clustered all the sources at the center of the interior of the cavity. We convolve it. And lastly, we have an input response of the space of listening, the chapel, for a specific source receiver combination. Code the combination to obtain the listening experience at that point. We are going to hear three fragments, two short fragments of the same piece, which are entirely simulated for the sources and for the spaces and characteristics model so far. We don't need to hear the entirety of the first two. The first two being the sound of the mouth, actually here. It's going to be highly noisy, not particularly pleasant, and you're going to hear all the mistakes of the simulations. In the second case, we are going to hear the listening position represented down there which is going to be highly reverberant. And lastly, the concert condition, which would be equivalent to placing two microphones out there in front of the organ a few meters in front of it. of the source. And from a more pleasant and realistic location for recording an organ.
improved this third section with a few remarks. We have proposed a model for the driving structure that depends on the geometry of the wind system, the supply system. We have used and we have inspected the one numerical scheme, which we have used for all the pipes that we have derived tuning parameters. We have done measurements for uh, validating our radiation features and our uh, measure of our pipe driving source conditions. And we consider that is we envisage that future work could uh, provide more insight in the repeatability of that data in extending our radiation model into three dimensional both in radiation outside the organ and uh, radiation in the interior. And uh, we have uh, further data to analyze from the uh, St. Elizabeth organ, which would help in interpreting what phenomena happen in two dimensions to three dimensions, scaling from a small positive organ to a great organ, and from excitation between electrophysical sources or actual pipe organs. That will be all for today. Thank you very much for your attention and I will happily take your questions now.